Hello, hi, hola everyone. I was going to make a video about how to make planets in uh, GIMP, but you know, something just keeps eating at me. The closer we get to November, with a lot of people getting all excited in Blender 2.9, November is when people use nodes like this to turn primitives like this into other things like this. So all of those nodes turn a default cube into four spheres. And it's people are absolutely amazing in what they do. They turn things into beaches, they turn things into tornadoes and farms and fields, and it has a really cool visual impact, but it doesn't have like a long lasting effect. And it's so complicated and it doesn't have a lot of long lasting use. Like it's so delicate. It's so easy to break all of this stuff. So really what I wanted to do was say out of all these things, what is the most important part about this trick? And the most important part about this trick are texture coordinates. This object has a checker texture. By default, the checker texture covers this default cube, which is two blender units cubed. It covers it with five checks. You can see those five checks right there. Gray, white, gray, white, gray, five. Okay. And it's squared. If you look at it on the top, it's five squared. So it's five across and five up and down. Very cool. Okay. When we plug in the generated texture coordinate to the vector socket, it's the same because the default is what's generated. How is it generated? That is a really good question because if I change this to 10, it changes to 10. 10 what? Scale implies a ratio, 10 somethings to something. I want to give you a warning right now because some of you may have actually uh, changed your units and when you change units, from metric or blender into imperial, suddenly this won't work well. This is now 6.56 feet and that makes things really, really weird. Blender units are assumed to be meters. One blender unit is one meter. One blender unit is a, a thicker gray line on the grid here. This is a top down view. This is looking straight on. This is looking from the side. So one meter is one blender unit. That's great. So when you see two, when you see two cubed, you're looking at two blender units cubed or two meters. Most important of all, the scale. Once this scale departs from one, you just have a hard time sharing whatever it is you've created as a procedural texture with your nodes. We said, what is the scale a ratio of? And I realize this is just not the most exciting discussion. So next chapter, I've just made this really gorgeous axes uh, out of um, curve objects. So this represents, I hope you know, X, Y, Z. But why is it R, G, B? Because look here in this top right corner, you'll see the makers of Blender and other 3D softwares, I assume, have cleverly tied X to red, Y to green, and uh, uh, Z to blue. So RGB and XYZ match each other. So I've parented these things to the uh, representation of the Z axis. And now I'm just happy in the shading tab for some weird reason. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it's really cluttered too. Okay, this thing had a scale of five. Now five what? This is where five is measured from the bounding box of an object and the bounding box of an object is in the extreme negative corner of the X, the Y and the Z globally. So every object has its bounding box beginning right here. So if I take that hide it and create a UV sphere that is a default shape and apply that material, uh, which is called material, and as checker texture five, the bounding box is what dictates the five. 
across that sphere. And the bounding box is something you can see if you go into these, what is this, object uh, object properties, and then viewport display, and then alter it to show you the um, bounds of the object, and then you render it at the same time, you can see both the uh, bounding box and also the object itself. Well, looky there. This bounding box matches the cube's bounding box. Uh, that's just proof that I'm not crazy. So let's go back and bring this in. Now, five what? Five per axes of the bounding box. That's it. So generated means five per dimension of your object's bounding box. So sometimes people plug in object and suddenly it gets small and they get absolutely confused. Well, two things have happened. One, the scale has changed, even though you didn't change the scale. The measure, the ratio is different. It's now five per blender unit. So here we go, gray, white, gray, white, gray. Per blender unit, which is per meter. Now, if you do this in Imperial and you're one of the people who work in feet and uh, inches, uh, you're, you're, this, this really won't apply. The other thing that has happened is the origin, the texture, assumes has moved. Now the origin of the texture assumes the pivot point to be its origin. So forget the 3D cursor for a minute and let's just look at origins, which is another way of saying pivot point uh, in, in, in object mode. Okay, so no matter where, no matter where I move this cube, its origin will travel with it in the dead center. The only way to change the origin's location is to go into edit mode and transform in some way the mesh around that pivot point. Back in object mode, the material will still only recognize the pivot point as its own origin. You can see that now the checker does not match the cube, whereas in generated, it still matches the cube because the bounding box traveled with the geometry, didn't care about that pivot point. That pivot point could be a great distance outside of the mesh. There's the pivot point outside of the mesh. Back in object mode, the mesh and its texture snapped back. There it is. That texture is locked to the bounding box. So we would rather, oftentimes, attach the texture's origin to the origin of the object. Woo-wee! I know, I know. But that's why it's smaller, is because now the scale is five per blender unit. Ah, you know what's kind of fun? Here to show you this, I've actually like really kind of screwed up where everything is in relation to everything. And I've got the pivot point of this cube way outside of the mesh. And I'm sitting in edit mode trying to line the two back up, which is totally silly. Because what can we do? We can right click an object and set the origin to the geometry and then suddenly it is back in the dead center where Blender most wants it. And then I can just type in where I want that object to go. And now suddenly our example is back the way it used to be. That is the lesson for today. I thought, you know, maybe I'm gonna sit here and discuss the RGB and XYZ and all these other things. And you know what, I don't. I don't because it's, it's not nightmarish, but it's really like too much for one video. I mean, even I got to say, that's too much for one video. And there, I can put these back to uh, negative one. Uh, you can click and drag across these and snap by holding the uh, control button just the same as you can snap by clicking and dragging geometry. I don't know if you knew that. But now you do. I'm going to teach you everything, man. So that helps make nodes make sense. The importance between generated an object can make or break a procedural texture and also be a big difference in how you share those textures with someone else. 
when we're looking at the object and we scale it down, we accidentally ruin the scale, which is supposed to be at one. But when we go in and scale it down, whoops, we go in and we scale it down. Now that texture remains correct globally. And perhaps this was the texture of wood. So now instead of like weirdly small wood, which came from some dwarf tree that doesn't exist, it's actually the correct fibers of wood, but on a small piece that someone made. And that is absolutely perfect for procedural materials because maybe you're doing a macro shot of someone who sculpted, you know, a little statue out of wood. So object will keep the scale if you scale in edit mode and then generated or default will not. There we squish it down again. And when we go back into object mode, it fails because even though it's small, it's looking at the scale of the object. It is not looking at the dimensions of the object. And most procedural textures really need it to pay attention to the dimensions of the object. So remember that piece of wood, if these were fibers or grains of a piece of wood and that piece of wood and the grains were correct at this size, we messed it up even by going into edit mode and scaling something down correctly, allowing its scale to remain at the correct value of one. I know that seems intimidating, but I think the basic advice is plug into object immediately and then understand that the scale relates to blender units or meters. And when you make your procedural texture, if something is one tenth of a meter in size, make it one tenth of a meter in size. It's that easy. All right. I hope this helps some of you. I, um, you know, still struggle with a lot of procedural materials because it's a lot of fun. No November is almost upon us. If you have questions about the way material nodes work or some of the sockets, drop me a line and I'll make a real like concentrated video, uh, which is just as casual as this one. Blend on, do well. I appreciate your subscriptions, your likes, and uh, also the comments. I do take time to read and time to reply to most of them. Thanks so much for watching.